everyone, and welcome to episode 16 of the Nitty Heather podcast. My name is Heather, and I'm coming to you from Kent, Washington, where I live with my husband and our Cavalier King Charles Spaniel Pepper. This is my podcast where I chat about everything I've been working on and all of the new things I learn along the way. I also love to feature really amazing dyers, designers, and makers in general. Think of me as a huge cheerleader for everyone who puts out beautiful work in the fiber community. If you are a new viewer, thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you enjoy it. And if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. I really, really appreciate it. If you would like to follow me, I am at Nitty Heather on Instagram. I always love connecting with people there and seeing what everyone else is working on. Anything I talk about, any patterns or accessories or yarn, will be linked in the description box below. Today is Thursday, February 18th, and I have a lot to share with you, so let's get started. Today I am wearing my 2019 Advent Mystery Knit Along by Molly Clatt of A Homespun House. I knit this in December of 2019 through January of 2020. It was a mystery knit along, so she sent out four 50 gram half skeins that you got to open up each week of Advent, and there was a clue to knit up that particular week with that particular half skein of yarn. I was able to keep up with it for the first few clues, but I did need to go into January in order to finish it up. This was on her 7525 soft sock base, which is just beautiful, a real dream to work with. It is so soft and really excellent stitch definition. The colorways were First Snow, Mistletoe, Roasting Chestnuts, and Winter's Night. And she did kind of have you fade them a little bit from the lightest to the darkest purple. Really pretty colors. I had so much fun knitting this up. You kind of transition between some of these eyelet sections and some really pretty texture. This was a triangle shape. I blocked it, which helped relax it and helped it to drape in a really pretty way. And she had you end with an I-cord bind off, which really finishes things off and helps it look and wear really nicely. This was the 2019 Advent Mystery Knit Along by Molly Clatt of A Homespun House. Today I am also wearing some tonal blue socks. The pattern I followed was the Go Your Own Way Socks by Stacy Winklepleck of Knit Picks. I chose to work this pattern from the cuff down with a slip stitch heel flap and gusset and a wedged toe. The yarn I used was Knit Picks Hawthorne in the colorway Delphinium. Hawthorne is an 80-20 superwash merino nylon base that is a very affordable workhorse yarn available in many beautiful colorways. I knit these a couple years ago, one at a time, on Magic Loop. Now on to a little bit of happy mail. I received my first skein from the Harry Potter Mystery Club from Crystal Skies Hand Dyed on Etsy. She does a monthly Harry Potter mystery skein club and you get to choose it on whichever base you would like. I chose her worsted base which is 100% superwash merino because I do want to continue making some really comfy sleeping socks. This colorway is called Aunt Petunia's Pudding Cake. It is from the second book, The Chamber of Secrets. I missed her first club from The Sorcerer's Stone, but I think I'll continue purchasing through the rest of the books. I think she moves along with each book every month. So I've, I have already made my purchase for the third book's colorway from The Prisoner of Azkaban. But if you'll remember from the second book, Aunt Petunia makes a really pretty pudding cake and Dobby makes it crash onto Mrs. Mason all over her. <laughs> but these colors really perfectly capture all of the different fruit and other decorations she had on her pudding cake. So I think she absolutely nailed this colorway. I think this will make a really lovely pair of sleeping socks. This is from Donna of Crystal Skies Hand Dyed on Etsy. Check out her shop. She has all kinds of beautiful skeins in her shop. She is a very talented dyer. On to my finished objects. I have one little tiny finished object and a half finished object that I'll share with you right now. My little tiny finished object is a little baby sock. 
So I mentioned a while ago that my cousins were expecting their first baby and he was born at the end of January. And so my plan is to make 25 of these little tiny baby socks that they can put out for him at Christmas. Eventually, maybe they can put a little treat in it or however they want to use it. Maybe they just hang one up every day throughout Advent. But I thought it might be cute to give them a little set of Christmas socks that I can work on throughout the whole year and give to them like in November so they can have it ready for this coming Christmas season. What I'm using are my leftovers from the Legacy Fiber Arts Advent Calendar I purchased last year. I'm using that in another project as well. And then once I'm done working in that, I have my leftovers to make these. This was from day one of their Advent Calendar. I am using the Baby Sock Pattern by Sue Stokes, the dyer behind Legacy Fiber Arts. It is a free pattern on Ravelry and on their website. And it's just a very simple heel flap, pick up the gusset, classic sock construction. And I think these are gonna be super cute. I'm happy with the size that it turned out. I think it's not too big or too tiny. I hope they really love these, but I do need your advice and your opinion. How should I present these? I kind of do want them to be able to hang these little tiny socks, but I'm not sure if I should do a braid and attach it, a little eye cord and attach a little loop. Maybe I could pick a ribbon to string through that would kind of put them all together, make them look cohesive. I'm not quite sure what I'd want to do. So leave a comment down below if you have any advice or if you've done anything like this before. I kind of do want to give them individually instead of like making a big garland. I could do a garland if they want, but I think I want them to be able to just hang them individually at this point. But I'm not quite sure what the best way to make something, make a little loop that these can hang on. So let me know what you think. Leave a comment down below. My next finished object is a half finished object. This is also from Legacy Fiber Arts. This is the first of my Conversation Heart socks. This was a sock set I purchased from them last year. And it has speckles of all the beautiful colors of Conversation Hearts, the little candy hearts that we always love around Valentine's Day. It came with this really pretty purple tonal mini. I did the Go Your Own Way Socks by Stacey Winkleplek of Knit Picks. That's sort of my go-to vanilla slip stitch heel flap and gusset pattern. So I did 15 rounds of a one by one rib for the cuff, worked down the leg. I think I did about 50 rounds for the leg. Did a slip stitch heel flap and gusset. And then after I picked up the gusset stitches, I think I did about 35 more rounds. I think that's usually what I do for this type of sock for my feet, and I did a rounded toe. I have cast on my second one. I've just begun the leg on my second one, so look for that one next week. This is Conversation Hearts by Legacy Fiber Arts. <laughs> Next up are my works in progress. The first one I'd like to show you this week are my Desert Vista Dye Work socks for the month of February. This is the colorway Happy Birthday Dr. Seuss. I'm using this yellow mini for the toes. I marked for my afterthought heel, which I will also do in that yellow mini. I've worked up since this Pepperoni Pizza Progress Keeper from Sucre Sucre Miniatures. I think my plan is gonna to be to work through the next yellow stripe and then go to the following one and only knit about one round. And that will give me a nice transition for the cuff when I do a two by two rib. I think I'll probably do about 10 or 12 rounds of a two by two rib with my yellow mini as well. Really pretty colors for Dr. Seuss. I do see some illustrations with these colors. I really like them and I think they will be very fun to wear at preschool when I start back up next month. So hopefully I can continue working up the leg this week and be just about ready for the cuff. 
I will have these done by the end of February for my entry in the 7th Annual Desert Vista Dye Works Monthly Sock Club. And I'm really excited. These are kind of different colors for me. I don't have very many other socks that are sort of in this color palette, so it will be very fun to add a little variety to my sock drawer. This is Happy Birthday Dr. Seuss by Desert Vista Dye Works. Next are my socks from the Cozy Knitters Yarn of the Month Club. I am doing the Be My Valentine socks by Christina, the Cozy Knitter herself. I think this pattern works very perfectly with this yarn. There's some X's and O's going up each side of each sock. This colorway is called Love is in the Air. I've made this much progress since my ice cream cone progress keeper, also from Sucre Sucre Miniatures. And I think once I am done, I just started this peachy pink stripe, and I think I'm going to measure once I'm done with this stripe. I think then I will be ready for my fish lips kiss heel. I'm going to do a fish lips kiss heel with this, and I think once I'm through this peachy pink stripe, I think that will be about the right length that I can start that, and that'll look nice to kind of have the heel growing out of that particular stripe. If not, I can maybe split this next tan stripe if it doesn't look like that will be long enough. You do need a cable needle to do these twists for the X's and O's, but I think these are turning out really nicely. This is Love is in the Air using the Be My Valentine pattern, both from the Cozy Knitter. Next up is a new cast on. These are my February Yarnable socks from Hypnotic Yarn. I have them in this cute little bag from the Scrappy Thread on Etsy. This colorway is called Cherry Cordial. Here it is in the cake. Does that not scream cherry, strawberry, chocolatey desserts? I love it and look at how pretty it is knitting up. This progress keeper is an iced Starbucks beverage from Bump on a Hill, and I'm doing Nina Phillips, the Knitting Expat's vanilla sock recipe, and she calls for a German short row heel. So I did 20 rounds of a two by two rib. I am working down the leg. I think I have maybe about 30 more rounds of the leg to do before I start my German short row heel. But look at this beautiful, even variegation. It is so gorgeous. I really love how these are turning out. I'm not sure if I will keep these for myself or if I will gift them to somebody. I am using my Addy Turbo Sock Rockets. And I think these are just going to fly off the needles. These are such pretty colors and they're going together so nicely. I can't wait to continue working. I am doing these one at a time, cuffed down. I, like I said, I have a few more rounds to do on this leg and then I will start the German short row heel that she calls for and continue down and probably do a rounded toe. This is Cherry Cordial by Hypnotic Yarn, her latest colorway from her Yarnable subscription box. Next up are my Rainbow Connection socks. This is a pattern by Kay Litton, the Crazy Sock Lady. And I'm using Desert Vista Dye Works, her Winter Rainbow sock set. This was two 50 gram half skeins. Since last week I did decide to add a few more rounds to the leg just to add a little more length and as you can see I just started I think I'm 20 rows into my slip stitch heel flap so I need to finish that up and then I will continue down the foot and then she has you go back and do the toe in this gray color as well kind of as the contrast color. These are knitting up so beautifully. It's a really simple, it looks pretty complicated, but it's not very difficult, the slip stitch pattern across the front of the sock. And then it just turns into some beautiful striping across the back. You never need to cut your yarn or anything like that. Once you incorporate the second self-striping colorway, you just keep carrying the yarn down. So I'm really excited to finish this first one up pretty soon. After I finish my heel flap, I'll of course pick up the gusset stitches and then start decreasing. I am trying to get this and then the second sock, which I haven't started yet, done by the end of March. That way I'll be able to start my spring rainbow connection socks right on April 1st 
for my spring quarter sock knitting. Here it is one more time. I love the rainbow tones in the self-striping yarn. Each season's yarn she has has a different sort of tone. I think the spring one's a little more pastel-y and the summer rainbow tones are very bright. So I'm excited to finish this up pretty soon. I have everything planned out where I can finish the second sock by the end of March. So wish me luck, I hope I can keep up with that. This Cupcake Progress Keeper is from Bluebird Miniatures on Etsy. This is the Rainbow Connection Socks by Kay Litton, the Crazy Sock Lady, knit up in Desert Vista Dye Works Winter Rainbow Collection. My last pair of socks I'd like to tell you about are the current pair of sleeping socks I have on the needles. Here they are. I'm working with my Knitter's Pride Dreams double point needles. This Progress Keeper, this cute little ladybug cupcake is from Simply Serving on Etsy. This colorway is called Gingham and it is from Amber's Yarn Shop. I think she did just change her shop name to Amber's Craft Place because she does a lot of other fun things, not just yarn in her shop. So check her shop out, Amber's Craft Place. The pattern I am using is the Learn to Knit Socks by Stacy Perry of Very Pink Knits. It's your classic slip stitch, heel flap, and gusset construction. I did pick up and decrease all of the gusset stitches, so now I'm just working down the foot. I think I have about 25 or 30 more rounds for the foot before I start closing up the toe. I really love this colorway, very bright and springy makes me very happy. And this superwash worsted base is really soft. I absolutely love it. They'll be very cozy to wear at night. Hopefully by next week, I will have this as a half finished object as well. And then I can cast on the second one. I did 12 rounds of a two by two rib for the cuff, 35 rounds for the leg. And then I think I'll probably do about another 35 rounds of just plain knitting for the foot now that I've decreased out all of the gusset stitches. This is the Learn to Knit Socks pattern by Stacy Perry of Very Pink Knits, knit up in gingham by Amber's Craft Place. Next is my Heart and Cowl. This is a pattern by Helen Stewart, the curious handmade I've worked up since this donut progress keeper from Suga Suga Miniatures. So I've made quite a bit of progress. I've been trying to do one section every day. I did not quite finish yesterday's section, so I have a little catching up to do later today. But this is a pattern from her 2020 Knit Vent collection where you use your Advent Minis. I am using my Legacy Fiber Arts Advent Minis. There are 25 of them. Now the pattern actually only calls for 24 minis. There's 24 different sections, but I am gonna go ahead and add a 25th stripe. Now last week my, I had said that my plan was gonna be to put just a plain stripe of knitting in the middle of the cowl, but I didn't realize that would have broken up one of these sort of lacy, leafy sections. So now my plan is going to be to do a section of just plain knitting right before the last section of ribbing at the top. So there'll just be one extra stripe right before the very end before I start the ribbing again. These are the minis that I am working up the baby socks for my cousins. I only use about three or four grams of each color, so I have plenty left over for my cousin's baby socks. I did cast on fewer stitches than the pattern calls for, but I'm really happy with how wide it's gonna be. Of course, I'll block it and it'll really stretch out as well. It kind of goes between these stripey sections and these lacy sections. I just started the next section with this pretty kind of tealy blue color. And I'm excited to see how the rest of the colors play with each other as I finish working up this cowl. I plan to hopefully have this done by the end of the month. This is the Heart and Cowl by Helen Stewart, the Curious Handmade. My last work in progress I'd like to show you today is my Noah Shawl by Devin Ventry, who is Nitty McPurley. Get my lifeline out of the way. This Angel Progress Keeper is from Pitter Patter Polymer. 
And as you can see, I haven't made a ton of progress. I got this next lacy section started with this really pretty kind of purple and green colorway. This yarn is the 2020 Christmas Advent Calendar from Clark and L. And as you can see, it kind of faded from this purple textury section into this lovely eyelet lacier section. I have just a few more sections left. It is growing quite large. It started down here at this little point. And it just really has such a nice rainbow of colors. It is going to be kind of an asymmetrical shape. I am increasing on one side and decreasing on the other, but I am maintaining the same stitch count from here on out. I am trying to keep track. The pattern does a really good job of telling you how many stitches you should have on the needles at the end of each section. And so just to kind of help me count and keep and make sure that I'm on track, I have these little stitch markers every 20 stitches. So I can just quickly count 20, 40, 60, 80, just to make sure that I am on track. Hopefully I can get this done pretty soon. I haven't been spending as much time on my shawls as I would like, but I'll try to remedy that as best I can. I try to put in a few minutes of work every day on this at least. But this has been a lot of fun to knit. Different sections of texture, baubles, lace, fading, striping, all kinds of stuff. It's a really good kind of sampler shawl with different techniques and I really think it is knitting up very beautifully. I think it should hopefully go with just about any color since there's just about every color in it. And I'm excited to see how this is going to turn out once I am done. This is the Noah Shawl by Devin Ventry, Nitty McPurley, knit up in the 2020 Advent Calendar from Clark and L. Well, I think that's about all I have for you for this episode. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate you spending a little bit of time with me and supporting my channel. Please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Please leave a comment down below if you have any questions or anything else you would like to see on this podcast. Once again, I am at Knitty Heather on Instagram if you would like to follow me there. I always love making new cyber knitting friends. But until next time, be well. Be kind and happy knitting. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.